Thank you very much. Uh, Father, we thank you so much for this time that you've given us. And how I pray, O oh Lord, that you take charge of this place. Take charge of those who are online. Their minds, their thoughts, and all their desires, O oh Lord, I pray that you take charge. Speak to us, King of Kings. And I pray that at the end of it all, glory and honor will forever be yours through the mighty name of Jesus we have prayed. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. My name is Oscar Sabit Kagonyera, and I serve the Lord with African Evangelistic Enterprise Uganda. And I'm so glad and delighted to be here today or this afternoon as we share the goodness and the word of the Lord. Uh, today we shall be talking about a theme that says called and anointed for exploits. Called and anointed for exploits. Friends, there are some things that I've loved within this theme. The first one, when you say you are called, and the second one, you are anointed. Now, it appears like these things are all totally different. You can be called, but the anointing is different. But here, when you are called and you are anointed, when you're called, it is simply meaning that the one calling you knows the reason and he has got a purpose for your calling. There is a reason he is calling unto you. There is a purpose why he's calling you. And anointing you is setting you aside for that purpose. And today we are saying when the Lord calls you and sets you aside for that work, for that thing that you are meant to do. Maybe at your workplace you're called and set aside for that purpose, to be in that office. Maybe you are called and set apart to be in that home. You are called and set apart to do that work. And I want to tell you, friends, every time we encounter big problems, that calls for bigger solutions. Every time you're faced with a big problem or challenge, it calls for a bigger solution. And as we go into our word in 1 Kings 17, 1 to 19, we see a man called Elijah. At the time when things were bad, time when things had gone out of hand, and everyone was worshiping Baal, where their king, the Bible talks in 1 Kings 16, 29, it talks about Ab, who was a king for 22 years, and married a woman who was from another nation, and the woman comes with an entrage, and within that entrage, there were her gods from her home area. And she carries them to a land that belongs to God. And when they get there, the king is taken up. The king begins worshipping the same Baal. The king is now in another dimension, and the whole nation is polluted. Friends, we are talking about being called and being anointed at a time when nations are polluted, families are polluted, workplaces are polluted, and many things are polluted. And God is setting us there for a purpose. He's sending you there for a purpose. So there is that time. And now when Elijah is called and anointed, this is what happens, friends. And I wish this happens to your life. When Elijah comes into this situation, Elijah makes a statement. Friends, when you're called by the Lord and you are anointed by God to handle and deal with a situation, you must be able to make a statement. Elijah makes a statement. Friends, I pray for you at your workplaces. I pray for you in your families. May the Lord use you to make a statement. May the Lord use you. In schools, we want teachers who will make a, a statement. In government offices, we want men and women who will make statements. In the church of God, we want men and women who will stand and make a statement. Elijah makes a statement. 
Friends, when you are called and anointed, you are a vessel of change. You are a vessel of redemption. You are a vessel of transformation. You cannot be called and anointed for exploits and things remain the same. No. Elijah comes in that anointing. He comes in that power and he understands the Lord who called him. How have you lived at your workplace? How have you been in your community? How do people view you? Do you make a statement or you're like others? It was a time of fear when men were being killed, when men were harassed. They were forced to worship Baal. But Elijah comes out and I want to tell you friends, whenever you make a statement, God makes a statement upon your life. Friends, listen, whenever you understand your calling and anointing and you stand firm to make a statement, God makes a statement upon your life. Now, when we get there, you realize that in verse 1, Elijah stands and says, there shall be no dew or rain in this land. Why? Elijah is simply withdrawing the, provi the provision of the Lord from the nation. When he says there shall be no dew and rain, it is simply, he is simply saying, I am withdrawing. You have lived comfortably. Food is there. Water is there. Life is okay. And you've chosen to worship Baal. Now I am praying for a withdrawal. <laughs> Praise be to God. There are prayers that come and they are tough. There are moments when you need to pray a tough prayer. When Uganda is polluted with homosexuality, we need men and women who will stand and say, we are withdrawing. The Lord is going to withdraw. The Lord is going to pull. We need statements in the nation. When corruption is the order of the day, when the nation is polluted, they are prayers that are strong. Elijah prays. And after making the statement, he makes it very clear. Friends, listen. He says, the God of Israel, as the Lord of Israel lives, before whom I stand, there shall be no rain or dew. He's simply speaking to their lives. They felt that God wasn't there. God wasn't working. God had hidden. God wasn't. But he's saying, as long as God lives, he's reminding them, friends, I want to remind you today, those who are following us, even today, God reigns. Even when the homosexuality thing rises high, God reigns. They may seem loud. They may seem the, the greatest. They may seem to have the power and the money. But God reigns. Ahab had the money. He was a king. He was strong. He had everything. But Elijah stands and says, I am standing before you. But I want you to know, as long as God lives, we shall not. Friends, I want to tell you, as long as God lives, you will not just perish. You will not just die. You will not just go. As long as God lives, you will live. He says, as long as God lives, the one I serve, hallelujah, he knew his God. One of the reasons why we fail to live under our, call, our calling and anointing it is fear. People fear. And the second is not knowing your God. When you don't understand and know your God, you will never live to this. And number three, focusing on the minors rather than focusing on the majors. When people are anointed and they are called, when they start seeing things working out, they begin focusing on minors rather than focusing on the majors. The men of God who were called to preach and pray for the people, they begin exploiting the people. The people who were called to help a nation come back into order, they bring disorder for their own gains. You forget the major and you focus on the minor. So Elijah prays and he says, there shall be, no listen, 
prayer of withdrawing the provision of God. Let me tell you, this comes at a crucial time in, in, the Israel, in the history of Israel. Elijah suddenly appears and he becomes a dominant spiritual force. And my prayer for you today is, may the Lord make you a dominant prayer for, or spiritual force in your area, in your country. May the Lord make you a dominant spiritual force. Elijah comes and appears and he becomes a dominant spiritual force. The king is scared. The wife is scared. When other prophets are hiding, the man is standing firm. I pray that you will stand firm when everyone is running away. Stand firm in your speech. Sometimes I get hurt when I see on, on national celebrations and you see people speaking things that are even not true. We need people who will stand and say, Your Excellency, here things are not okay. Honorable Prime Minister, things are not working out well. Make a statement. Be a dominant spiritual force. Even when others fear, never fear. Stand for the Lord. Praise be to God. So he makes a statement. Now, when he does that, in verse 2, listen, dear friends, when you make a statement, God there and then makes a statement in verse 2. Then, after saying the prayer, the Bible says, then the word of the Lord came to Elijah. Hallelujah. After making the statement, then the word of God came down. If he had not made the statement, the word of God would be nowhere. Hello? Maybe the reason you're struggling with a situation, you're failing to make a statement that God expects of you. And the Lord is saying, I am waiting for that statement. I am waiting for you to become a dominant spiritual force. I am waiting. When he made a statement, there and then, the word of God came to him. And what does the word say? The word of God came to Elijah, not to the whole nation, but to Elijah who had made a statement. Live here. Live here and turn east uh, and hide under Kireth Refin, east of the Jordan. You will drink from the brook, and I have ordered ravens to feed you there. Praise be to God. He's simply saying, you've made your statement, and now I'm making mine. I am saying, your work is finished here. Now go to where I'm sending you. When you reach there... I, the God you saw before Ahab, will provide, will protect, will make a way. He makes a way and says, you're taking this direction. He's not saying, I don't know where you should go because Ahab is everywhere. No. No. Even if your enemy has the money, he has got the army, he has got everything. God has a special way for you to move and you will never be affected. He says, move his words. Go to the brook. Remember, the man said, no rain, no dew. It wasn't just about a drought. It was even about famine. Where there is no water, crops won't grow. There was, there was going to be a mess. And God says, now that the dew is gone and the rain is gone, I am showing you that I am still with you. Go to the brook. The water shall be there and you will drink. The ravens will feed you. Friends, I can assure you, when you make a statement for the Lord, even the, the impossible will be the possibilities. When things seem so hard, God will make them perform the purpose. Friends here, they are saying called and anointed. Elijah was called and anointed. I can assure you, even the ravens had been called and anointed for the purpose of feeding him. There shall be a way when God says your work is over here. I am sending you somewhere. God knows your next state. He knows how you will survive. He knows how you will be. He knows how you'll be lifted. God knows everything. He says go. Just go. As long as you are there at the brook, I will feed you. Friends, sometimes we fear to go there. As long as you are the brook, I will feed you. 
Friends, I pray that the Lord, in the midst of the work you're doing, may God keep on showing you where the brook is so that when you are there, you will never run out of water. You will never, he was ready to provide for him as long as he stayed and lived at the brook. Praise be to God. People worshipped Baal because of fear. They practiced everything of Baal because of fear. They did whatever they thought was right for Baal because of fear. But Elijah stands out strongly because he knew his God. He knew his God. Elijah makes that prayer. Number one, what you get from the prayer, it was a demonstration of God's true nature. He was God over all nature. He's going to stop the dew and the rain. Let me see whether your God will. He's going to provide for him at the brook. Let me see in the midst of a lot of sunshine, whether it won't fry. He's going to provide food using ravens. Where were these ravens getting bread and meat? Friends, meat is found in specific places. You must have slaughtered. Where will a raven get meat and bread? Where or how will a raven locate a bakery? But when God is in the system, even ravens will find the bread and the meat for you as long as you stand for the Lord. He says they will. It was a demonstration of, uh, of the true God, a demonstration of his rule over everything, a demonstration of the greatness of our God, a demonstration of the authority of God over nature. And the same God lives and reigns in your situation. He is the same God. As long as that God lives, my friend, you are more than a conqueror. Praise be to God. Now, ravens are doing the work because he's there. Now, as the Lord lives, people thought he's gone. People thought he was no longer working. But he's reminding them, our God still lives. Even when you think your job is about to go, the Lord still lives. Your work is to make a statement. But you know that that you should really uh, make the statement you should make. He's standing before all these words. He's making them before the big man. But I'm telling you, when God is with you, things are on the right side. Praise be to God. Hide at the brook. You will find water. I will provide. So Elijah's part work was to go. Praise be to God. Understanding the time to go. Before you focus on other things, understand the times to move on. When God has used you, you're done with your ministry. He says, now move on. So the Bible says, so Elijah did according to the word of God. The word of God said, go, not according to his fear. Elijah did not act according to his fear. He never acted according to his doubt. He never acted because everyone was acting that way. He never acted according to his wisdom. He never acted according to his prophetic anointing. Much as he was anointed, he was a prophet. He never acted under that. He listened to the word of God. The statement of God in your life is what matters most. He acted according to that. And Elijah went on. He went there until the brook was now dry. Now when the brook dries, when God told you to go, what happens? The generation of today would complain. It is not. They would complain. They would begin doing other things. They would look for options. Now let me tell you, even when the brook dries, God still works. Even when the brook seems to be drying up, the Lord has got another, another way for you. When the brook was drying, God makes a different way. God made the way safe to the brook, first of all. As he was going, it was a safe way. He made the brook keep flowing. He made the ravens know their purpose. And he positioned a widow somewhere to take over after the ravens have done their work. Anointed and called to do exploits. Elijah is doing his work. The ravens are doing their work. There is a widow somewhere who is called and anointed to do some work, but she's not yet aware of it. 
and Elijah is coming to open it up. So when the brook dries, there is another power opening the purpose of the widow. Hallelujah. There is a power opening and now it is time to move and God cuts that off. Friends, I can assure you there are many things God will keep cutting off so that other places or your purpose is opened up in another place. There are things that shall be cut. Now, the brook is cut off and I'm praying there are things that have made you comfortable and they make us fail to carry on the purpose of God. I pray that God carries out the fear from you and he begins trimming them off. When the brook dried, there is another opening. The word of God comes again. Hallelujah. Living under the power of the word of God. The word of God comes again. He says, Elijah, move to another place. I have stationed a widow. Now, widows were known for poverty. They were known for that state. But God is saying, there is where I'm sending you. Friends, don't look at yourself and look at your situation. Maybe things are not okay. God is not focusing on the kind of shoe you put on, the kind of dress you're putting on. No, God is focusing on your willingness to move. To move. Whether the shoe is upside down or the soul is almost jumping off, God will provide on the way. Whether your shirt is torn, God will make a way as you're moving. All you need to do is to move. He moves. He's not aware of anything. Now it is tough and he gets there. When he gets to the woman's place, at that time, at that time, friends, something new is coming up. I can assure you, there are many of us who have failed to notice that the brooks are dry. Brooks are dry. There is an extra state. Brooks in our families are dry. Brooks in the church are dry. Brooks at our workplaces are dry. What are we doing? They have dried up, but we are still very comfortable. Why does God let the brook dry? It is a question to everyone, those who are online and ask, why would he do that? So Elijah goes to, uh, to, to the widow's place. Now reaching there, the Bible says, the, the, then the, in verse 8 to 9, then the, the Lord came to him saying, you go to this place. I have commanded a widow. God places people in certain places to hold your hand when you are unable to move on. He places people in places so that when you're almost falling, they hold your hand. When you're almost saying it cannot happen, they hold your hand. When you're almost giving up, they are there. When Elijah is moving and is moving, a widow is there. But listen to this. When he gets there, he says, a little bread and some water for me. Sad news. The widow says, friend, this is one thing I want us friends to, to just get out of this statement. It is so amazing that the widow, in her response, says, as long as, no, as, as the Lord, your God, lives. Not the Lord, my God. Now, we are dealing with two people. Elijah is saying, as the Lord, my God lives. The woman is responding, I don't have anything, even as, as long as the God, you, your God lives. Now, this woman is placed somewhere, but she, had, she knows God, she understands God, but she had never connected with God to see God as her own God. As long as your God lives. I don't have bread. I even don't have anything to give you. Hello? Your God, not my, not, the woman is not dealing with her God. So they are there. There is no bread. But I can assure you, the statement, the widows, as long as your God lives, she knew God, repeated, respected him, but she had never conceptualized him as her God. To you, how do you look at this God of Elijah, our God? 
Have you conceptualized God to make him your God? Much as he is called, you are called, you are anointed. Elijah says these words. Even when my God lives, and my God is not yet your God, woman, don't fear. Praise be to God. Friends, even when the brook dries at your workplace, don't fear. Even when your workmates are fighting with you, don't fear. Even when that other woman is fighting your marriage, don't fear. The brook may seem to be drying, but God shall bring another person who will hold your hand. Say, don't fear. Don't fear. Go and do as you have said. You go. The thing is, when you are called and you are anointed, you must be willing to go. People are not willing. How do I go to the city center? How do I step in there? How do I talk to this big man? How do I speak to my... He says, you go. You don't have enough, but go. You are not so educated, go. You are very short, go. The man is far above you, go. Praise be to God. The word of God came. The, very simple. Friends, God is looking for people who are willing to go. To go. Go with your broken English to school. They will hear the little, but the message of God will come home. Don't be scared. You go with that. You just go. He said, you go. And he said, the bin of, uh, uh, the, 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 the container of your flour shall never run dry. If you go, as long as you choose to go, you will never lack. Praise be to God. The Lord tells Elijah, go to the brook. As long as you go, I shall provide. Now Elijah is telling the widow, go and do the same. If you do it, you will never lack. Praise be to God. And I'm praying for everyone. May the Lord encourage you to take a step so that you never lack, so that you never fail on the statement of God. When you go, your containers will never lack. Friends, the fear that is making you stay in a corrupt office and you're becoming corrupt, God is saying, just step out. You will never lack. Make a statement and move on. He says, there is that. Never. It will never. And the jar of oil will never run dry. Hallelujah. The food will never fail and the oil shall never stop flowing. That is God. He makes things that seem impossible work. Things that seem impossible. The woman has nothing. She's looking at her deathbed. But the man is saying, uh, sister, just go. Just go. And what happens when Elijah, when you're reading, the Bible says the called and the anointed to do exp When Elijah got the statement of the Lord, when a statement came upon his life, he went to the brook. Now when the statement came upon the life of the widow, she went and did as the man of God had said. Response. Responding to the calling and to the anointing. So she went away and did as Elijah had said. She never did. Uh, friends, I am dealing with fear. She did not focus on the fear. Truth is, what was left was enough for her and the son after they die. That is the truth. But now things had changed. It was no longer about death. It was about living forever. What seemed small, God was enlarging. I want to assure you, my dear friend, it may appear like the statement is, you are going. But as long as God is saying, you are not going, even if they bring the whole army, you will never go. You can never. She was prepared to die. She was ready to eat the small bit left. But God said, it is small before your eyes, but before me, it is something big and big and big and big and big forever. Praise be to God. It wasn't that way. So Elijah is there with the widow, and the widow is now seeing something uh, really different. Elijah said to her, don't be afraid. Go home and do as you have said. But from what you have, and, uh, from what you have, and bring it to me. And uh, then make something for yourself and your son. 14, for this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, said. Praise be to God. When you yield to God, 
to the calling and the anointing, God will always make a statement upon your life. He will always. This is not what Elijah is saying to her. This is what the Lord is saying. Praise be to God. May the Lord make a statement upon your life this afternoon. And as I conclude, my dear friends, listen to this. Verse, the, uh, for this is what the Lord God of Israel says. The jar of your flour will not be used up and the jug of oil will not run dry until the day the Lord gives rain and uh, rain on the land. Hallelujah. Unstoppable blessing of God. The jar will never f uh, get empty until the Lord again, not man, not man, hallelujah. No matter how much you eat, whether you choose to do breakfast and you do uh, break tea and then you have lunch and then you have evening tea and you have dinner and you have another, uh, I don't know whether it's another dinner tonight. He's saying whether you eat 50 times, it will never dry. When the unlimited blessing of God comes, no man can stop it. Why? You are cold and you're living under the statement upon your life by the Lord. It will never dry. It will never. So she went away and did as Elijah had told her. So there, so there was food every day for Elijah and for the woman and her family. For the jar of flour was not used up and the jar of oil did not run dry in, and in keeping with the word of the Lord spoken by Elijah. Hallelujah. He said she went and did exactly that. But when she did it, now, food was enough for her, for Elijah, and for every member of the house. And it will never turn down. Because the word of God that lives forever had been made upon the house. Praise be to God. That came to be the word. Friends, what is that fear that has held you from understanding the calling of God? I want you to know the Lord has set you somewhere to make a statement. And the Lord is ready to make a statement upon your life. Do not fear. Understand your God. Make the major things major and don't focus on the minors. Praise be to God. When you do that, trust me, you will see what happened into the life of the widow. The Bible has said there was enough for Elijah, for the widow, and for the rest of the family. The Lord will provide enough for everything and your daily uh, needs. Praise be to God. We are going to pray. We are going to pray, friends. The Lord wants us to understand that we are in a place for a purpose. Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for your word, O oh God. Lord, thank you for reminding us that there are days, that there are times that pollute our nations. They pollute our, our families, pollute schools and workplaces. But even in the midst of that pollution, oh God, you still call and anoint people who shall make a statement that will create change, oh Lord. Father, I pray that you will raise an army of cold people and anointed who shall make a statement in our nation, Uganda, in this globe, O oh Lord, in every part of the world, O oh Lord. They shall stand firm like Elijah and make a statement. I pray, my God, that when the statement is made, Lord, there shall be another statement from you, apart from, uh, that comes from your God. Lord, I pray that you will be by their side. You will stand with them. I speak against the spirit of fear that has held us captives into the pollution, O oh God, that has kept us in a state that we are not meant to be in, O oh God. Lord, I pray that you clear our minds, O oh God. Make us ready to hear your voice and live and yield to it, O oh God. Father, you called and used the ravens to feed your servant. You are still the same God. In the midst of poverty, in the midst of, of the killings we see every day. Lord, you still know the right way for, your, for those who will make a statement for you. Lord, I pray that you give us a rhema word, O oh God. I pray that you make us strong. I pray that you encourage us. I pray that you remain there to lead us, O oh God, like you've done every day. 
Lord, I pray for each and every one, those online and, the, and those who are in church. Lord, make us people who will make a statement in this world. We thank you and glorify your name. Through the mighty name of Jesus, we have prayed. Amen.